Rafe Hatchard was sitting on the flagged terrace on the garden side of his newly acquired house one warm evening in May. He had been a month here and looking back through his happy and busy life, he could not recollect having ever been busier and happier. He sat alone for the time being, content to take his ease and glance at the newspaper. Even now he gave but a cursory attention to it, and his eye wandered over the lawn and the long-neglected flower beds, which the joint labours of the gardener and himself were quickly bringing back into orderly cultivation. The lawn must be cut tomorrow, and there were some late flowering roses to be planted. Then perhaps he dozed a little, for though he had heard no one approach, there was the sound of steps somewhere at his back, and the tapping of a stick on the paving stones of the terrace, he did not look round, for of course it must be his brother Francis, recently arrived from India, returning from his shopping. He had occasional twinges of rheumatism which made him a little lame, but Rafe had not noticed till today that he limped like that. Is your rheumatism still bothering you, Francis? he said, still not looking round. There was no answer, and he turned his head. The terrace was quite empty. Neither his brother nor anyone else was there. For the moment he was perplexed. Then he was aware that he certainly had been dozing, for his paper had slipped off his knee without his noticing it. The sun had set and there was a slight chill in the air which caused him a moment's goose flesh. So, getting out of his basket chair, he took a turn along the gravel path which bordered the lawn his eye dwelling with satisfaction on the labours of the day. The bed had been smothered in weeds a week ago. Now, there was not a weed to be seen on it. Ah, just one. That small piece of chickweed had evaded notice, and he bent down to root it up. At that moment, he heard the limping step again. Not in the street at all, but close to him on the terrace, and the basket chair creaked as if someone had sat down in it. But again the terrace was void of occupants and his chair empty.